friends, welcome to this very special episode where we talk about all the unfinished objects. My name is Doc and I'm coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico. I hope you all had very happy holidays and celebrated what it is that you celebrate um, with joy and love because I feel like, yes, it's almost like another Thanksgiving where we, yeah, we're, we're grateful for what we have and grateful for the people in our lives and for the love in our lives. So that's um, a good thing, right? Uh, I told you in the, in the last episode that there's this exciting thing coming up, the thing, and it is a special make-along that is happening on Instagram. So if you've always thought about creating an account but you don't have one yet, this is the time because in January, we will start January 1st to tackle those UFOs, our unfinished objects. And you have time to finish uh, until the end of April. And this is a knit along that has been um, called by, or a make along, I should say, that's been called by my friend Marcus who's in Germany, but of course, um, most of you will know that you can have any posts translated, so there won't be any language barrier that you can hide yourself behind. <laughs> this is the time. And I thought it would be fun uh, to go through what I have, the UFOs that I have at my house. And you know, it's kind of like, mm, I don't have that and that's how you start off it's not that bad and then you think about it and you go to the drawer where you know some of them are and then you thought think about what you have going on right now and then you realize wait it's not that little so let's make this happen and um, if you in case you wonder and you want to maybe assess what you have to, it's important that you take a picture of the project before you start tackling it. And then um, on January 1st, we're gonna get going on those UFOs. And the, yeah, it's kind of like your decision. What do you consider a UFO? It could be something that you cast on last summer and that should have been finished by now. Like I um, showed you the dress for my goddaughter. That's like ridiculous that it's not done yet. But there's other things that are really deep, 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 very, very old UFOs. Um, that you may want to tackle right now. And I've already had a few responses about unfinished sweaters, sleeves that need to be done, a poncho or several ponchos, one of them woven and one of them um, by my friend Marcus, who's hosting. Um, so that's really really awesome so i there will be something that you can win and of course it's going to be yarn duh and um i'm i am donating a skein of yarn for the american participants and um thank you we've already had some responses sorry i have some floating right in front of my eye and the um and so so in so there's already been some yarn dyers in germany that have responded and ever so kindly um offered to donate a skein of yarn as a win and uh, of course i will keep you posted about all of that and um but maybe there is someone in the states who also would like to join in and would also like to donate a skein of yarn and um, 
do send me an email if you if that is something that you would like to do and then we can figure out all the details all right let's do this did you want to know what i'm wearing this is a vera valley mackie design and you can um as you and you can find all of my projects on ravelry of course where my handle is paper duck as also on instagram this is a um i always get them mixed up the pure joy and the breathing space now which one is this your guess is as good as mine <laughs> i'll put it on the screen for you all right let's get started okay i wanted to show you something a project that i don't even call a ufo because i'm working on it um, continuously i just forgot to bring it to the last episode and that's my hoki locatelli um, shawl the ziggy which i am knitting out of um, two of my yarns one of them is a Suri Alpaca blend and the other one is the Honeysuckle uh, which is a cashmere silk merino and I have picked up my pace since I had seen you the last time and I knitted all the way through the fluffy section and I am now on the last lace section and I'm looking forward to having this done. I just wanted to show you so you know what else I'm working on. Then I started a hat sometime in fall, as you may be able to guess from the cute Hawthorne Cottage bag that it's living in, which is a, which was a gift from my friend Therese. And this is kind of like an embarrassing UFO because even though it hasn't been started in too long ago. And this is what I'm talking about. It's this hat. And I said that I was gonna knit a few rows in the morning, but, or maybe even every morning, but this hasn't happened. So it, while it has been growing a little bit, I really want to push this and get it done before the end of this make along. I'm using yarn that I picked up in two years ago in Alaska and it's a DK yarn and the company is called Northern Bee Studio. Got gorgeous yarns. Yeah, so that's this, definitely one to push. I told you about the dress for my goddaughter, which lives in this fairy tale bag. And then a few of the projects I already took out of their bags, as, and you, as you will see as we get to them. Because I would really, I feel like when I see them, I'm more inclined to work on them. So that's kind of, that was my thought. I'm gonna pick up some of the easier ones first. So this is a pair of double knit socks. And I know some of you are have such good memories. So you may actually remember that I wanted to write up the pattern for double knit socks but I feel like right now I was like oh my god how am I even gonna make time for this so this has been on hold but I could at least finish the socks right even if I don't knit up the pad uh, right up the pattern and that's um, a sock where I hold two balls of fingering yarn fingering leftovers and I'm working on it with 3.5 millimeter needles. And it lives in this lovely bag that I made. 
and the fabric I once got from Doris, who always supplies me with cheap themed fabrics. <laughs> so then there is another one that you have never seen. I never showed it on the podcast. I only talked about this hat and that I would love to figure out how it is done because I know you can make this in a human person size. And I did indeed get started on it. Boring, but I lost my second ball of yarn because I just grabbed some random yarn and I started and then I lost interest. I thought, full disclosure, even though I know I never showed you and I know I, <laughs> I will probably not ever show you again, um, I thought you got to see this uh, because that's the kind of play stuff that happens in between and I, I'm pretty much de decided that I'm going to rip this out. So let me find that second ball of yarn. The yarn is really nice and it, I had no tags. It was with one of mom's yarns. You know, it's funny because you look at the stuff and you're like, maybe I should continue with this. It's kind of neat, isn't it? So we'll see. All right, but now you know, and I will keep you posted if anything happens. Oh, wait a second. Is there a tag in here after all? Oh, interesting. There is. Hold on. Soft alpaca. What company? Nico? What is this? I don't have any glasses. Doesn't matter. Okay. So it's really, it's nice yarn. Okay, and I already told you that I definitely want to continue working on the power flower top. Is it a top? Yes, power flower top by Strick und Fett. I believe this is only available in German, but super cute, super, I need to say, this is very well written, this pattern, wow. Um, I know that when I started writing patterns, I was not that good, so thumbs up for my uh, podcasting colleague Anya. Um, so this is where I am. I have the flower section and I have to connect. Um, I have to continue with the blue another thing like this and because I am limited in my yarns so this is all I have from this yarn. I had the idea of possibly knitting the bottom of this because it is, well, knitted fabrics don't eat as much yarn as crocheted. So that was my idea. And this is one of those that I took out of their project bag. Oh, let me. And then I need so here's another UFO. Uh, just melt something down. You may remember, but this one I will not even think about finishing until the end of April. And I thought I'd show you because it's one of my unfinished objects. I haven't touched it in a long time. 
And there is something when I thought, you know, you think about everything and you think, what am I gonna do? What do I even have? And you evaluate and you think, what was I even thinking to actually not finish up every ball of yarn that I started crocheting into the blanket? And that's what I did. I really, I, I thought, oh, it doesn't look that nice to have two rows of the same color. Um, sorry, not gonna happen anymore. I will use up every little ball of yarn till the end. Hold on one second. And while my mother finished several blankets, three, total of three large ones, maybe even a fourth for my brother, um, I, haven't even finished one, but alas, I pulled it out and I got going again and I will be weaving in the ends. And as I go, because there's also a lot of ends still hanging. So I started doing that and I added, uh, let me think. These three are new. Yeah. And I'm going through my tower of mini skeins that I believe I showed you last time. Did I? Didn't I? Yeah. And so I'm working through these and I'm keeping track if I know which yarn it is. I'm still keeping track or trying to keep track just because sometimes you encounter something super lovely and then you do want to know what it is yeah so this is where i am with my sock memory blanket and it's not sock memories it's swap stuff swap memories okay this is something that i have abandoned for now and this is something that just happens when you have ideas and they sometimes just don't work out. I wanted to design a pair of fingerless mitts because it's really something that I love. And it wasn't working out quite the way I thought it should. And so I abandoned it for now. And I may get back to this even at some point, but it may be a while, even though they're really pretty. And the, but the yarn also is just some random yarn. So I couldn't write a pattern with random yarn. So I'm gonna have to, do this again and they're cute but not happening so they are definitely a ufo and they will but will i tackle them for the ufo mania i don't know we'll see next this is definitely a ufo because i started this a long time ago and it is a shawl and while I would love having it and having it finished, I don't love knitting it because it is so incredibly boring. Yeah. I'm using Sita Suri by Lana Grossa. And I need to finish this color and these two. And how many stitches? I think, I feel like I have around a hundred stitches that I cast on and then it's just stuck in it. And there, the needles are, I wanna say 5.5 millimeters. Now I get stuck with my ring. I 
told you about my Aster shawl. That is the one that I started with Marcus, who was hosting the knit along. And when he took a break on it, I thought, okay, I'm gonna take a break too. And this is where I was. And the yarn is divine. Buttery alpaca. And one other, it's a Wooly Wonka. Whatever. I don't need to show you because these she's not dying anymore. She's a local used to be dying friend. Um, then the main color is Harriet by Juniper Farm. And the turquoise contrast color is so amazing. Perennial by Kelborn Blinds. So that's definitely gonna be tackled then there is something some something that's really kind of sad because I uh, lost in thought I don't even know why I'm so attached to this I was um, I wanted to design a sweater and one that has dolman sleeves, you know, kind of like, like that. But I lost steam. And I had this idea to add like just three garter stripes on the bottom. And I'm on the second ball of yarn and I think I stole the third that I had for this because I needed it for something. Can't remember what, that's how long ago that was. And I think I'm attached to, to it because, and that's why I didn't rip it up yet because there's some really special mini skeins in here. One of them is from Debbie. Periscoping Sisters and from a swap. I'm not quite sure about the others, but I love that. And the name of the colorway is Sterntaler. And it was a, one of my early speckled yarns. And it's named after a fairy tale uh, that I love so much. And so, yeah not really attached to the project but more of all the thing more to all the things around it like the yarn the stripes the stitch marker progress keeper yeah but i am thinking i gotta be brave and let this go i probably started this three maybe even four years ago do you believe that also it was a lot of knitting <laughs> That went into this. Love the colorway. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. Yeah. Then there is another one where I'm really very much uncertain if I should really continue on it. And it's, I had to pull out my pants because my beautiful Grinch pants were sliding down in the waist fixed it so this is something where i'm like oh, do i really want to do this i think i'm gonna have to rip that out for several reasons no for mainly for one reason so <laughs> this is the yarn and what I wanted to make is this. And my problem is that I'm just not a bottom up girl anymore. I just wanna be able to try on stuff and adjust as I go along from the top down. And um, so, this may be ripped out, 
too, even though I just loved meeting Gudrun Johnston. And um, I, I think she's this incredible designer and she's just a wonderful person. But um, I think this yarn needs a different project. And what else do I have? I'm gonna show you the yarns. Maybe I don't do anything else. I um so the what is this? So I bought all of these yarns on a trip to Wyoming and Yellowstone a few years ago at Mountain Meadow Wool. And the yarn is just like super fun. I was thinking, is it too dense? But no, it's just, it has so much bounce. The way I know it from hand spun yarns, love it. But now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking one of the yarns that I put in there is one of mine. And I think, oh no, it's not. This is from Battenkill Fibers. I had a sample. sample of their yarns and um i over dyed it yeah and i thought i'm going to be able to combine it with this and i have these extra colors and and I think they would all work together. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do. I will make a decision. And <laughs> the question is, is it allowed to rip out and still enter that as a... Marcus is going to have to tell us. If I have a UFO and I... But no, I think he said it's got to be finished. It's the beginning status and the end status that you need to enter with. But I could start with this and I could end up with a ripped out, <laughs> like a ripped out um, a rest of nothingness. And then does that count? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Okay. And then there's one more knitting project that I have not touched in a while but I'm really looking forward to finishing and it's a lace shawl with one of my lace yarns this is a base called willow and I am making the tree beyond a tree peonies and I think it will be glorious and I'm very excited about tackling this and coming back to it. And because I love the color and I love this yarn, it's a very light, delicate, woolly yarn as you would expect. And this is where I am. I had been knitting this with a German knitting friend, but I don't even know if she... Wait a minute. Did you start the same project? Did you rip it out? Colleen, tell me. I'm very excited to be getting back to this. Very, very excited. And then there is this... I said this was the last knitting project, but not true. I just glanced down at my <laughs> sock suitcase. I have four projects in here. I don't know if I'm going to be able or if I'm going to be able or willing to tackle any of these. It sure would be nice. I have four in here. One, two... three and four <sighs> yeah we'll see what happens with the socks 
they're kind of low ranking on the scale of importance for this knit along. But I have something else that I really wanted to show you because I haven't even touched any of these in, I want to say years. Let me start with this punch needle project. Ignore the frame. This is just a frame that I found, had, whatever. And um, the, to work on this, you come from the back and uh, the fabric needs to be very, very tight. Otherwise you can't do anything. This is how it looks like in the back. And what's missing here is, you can see it here, it's a border, this border. And I had purchased a kit from these folks a few years ago. I love what they have, really cute stuff. Yes, this punch needle, goodness gracious, let's get going and whip it out and get it finished. This was the packaging, the top sheet of the kit. Bought that in Taos at the Taos Wool Fest. And the all my punch needle accessories live in this little basket. So there's other stuff in here too. So, but the, this one is on top here. And then, <laughs> have you been here for a while? Then you may know that I am a rug hooker. So, may, can I even say I am a rug hooker? I was a rug hooker. And so I will show you what I have in progress and we will look at that together because I haven't, I've just pulled it out and I will look at it with you and we will assess the damage. <laughs> no, we will see how much is missing and what is doable for this make along because that's the beauty of this make along. Everything is allowed. Hold on. All right, in case you don't know anything about rug hooking, um, you use some kind of a coarse fabric usually, which, um, for example, burlap or linen, mainly, I would say. And then you have a frame like this one with very sharp hooks, and you pull your fabric tightly over it and then you oh my gosh <laughs> you probably can't see this but there's a spider web here oh my goodness that's how long i haven't touched this that's funny you pull the fabric tightly over this and then you work from this side and uh, pull out loops of usually wool and you will see that in a second. I usually pull, put something over this because it's very sharp. The little hooks, you know, the gripper strips. So this is something that I definitely want to tackle and I want to finish this. It's a project that I have always in the past, but still not in at least two years. I have pulled it out at Christmas time and I wanted to have it done on Christmas, but when you work on it just so close to Christmas, it's just not possible to finish it. But let me show you what it is. I have this fabric for the background, which is kind of like in the snow and icy fabric. And when I say background is that I use it cut into strips like this. 
and then I have I cannot even remember what was this it lives in here and it will be this a little Christmas mat for my daughter because she drew this and it makes me smile so much look at that look at it oh my goodness I had the best rock cooking teacher, Kathy Kelly, who is here local in Albuquerque, or she's, she's on the other side of the mountain, but she's local to me and she's just, she's an artist. She's incredible with color and um, she's just, I love her. And she taught me so well, and I know it's gonna make her very happy when I tell her, hey, I picked this back up because she also, she loves Fiona. So. so this is where I am. I think I was not sure how to put the designs on the tree. I need to think on this. So we'll see. So the tree trunk was the brown, or maybe the brown was for the reindeer, not sure. I do have a notebook. Oh, this is so cute. Look at that. <laughs> Sean the sheep. So, okay, I will read this a little bit later. And here's my my um, work basket where with all kinds of stuff and in case you wonder and you know nothing about rock cooking hold on I need to show you a little bit better these are the two hooks that I own, I own one more, I think. Oh, this was actually Fiona. Fiona did this for a while, rug cooking. And this is the one that I used for this project. And I made this because when you cut off whatever sticks up, you have a little bit of uh, leftover um, bit and and you just stuff it in here and it sticks because it's wooly. I'm knitted and felted this. And these are the scissors that you use flat to be used on the hooked fabric. Anything else in here? Oh, here's my other hook. I just love this. This is one of my favorite hooks. I know Sherry, who's also a rug hooker, she will appreciate this because it feels so good. You look at that wood. Oh my gosh, I love it. So you go in from the from the top, you pull you hold the fabric strip under your working surface. You go through your linen or whatever it is, and you pull your loop up and you position them right next to each other. Yeah. So that is this. And I will dig into this later and maybe I will pull a few loops today. And I will probably find myself not being able to do it anymore. But as Kathy taught me, you just got to pull those loops loops you just gotta pull the loops here is another super special project that i brought out to show you because it's a ufo but i will not even try to tackle this because it is a giant floor sized rug that i designed with um 
a lot of drawings that my kids have made over the years when they were little and kind of meaningful like our son was into the giant squid. Fiona's horses always looked super funny. Louis also loved uh, snakes and who doesn't love a dinosaur? This is a house that Fiona made. And this is what Fiona, how she always drew people. <laughs> yes, and what did I write on the dream on my child? Joy, love, passion live your dreams and when i started this the kids were already pretty big probably teenager age and fiona immediately said i want that i want that <laughs> and where am i with the project not very far but some of it is done so you, now you can see how big this is going to be Wow. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Thought I'd show you since I pulled out all my rug hooking. I have another rug hooking project which is more doable and I might be able to finish it um, during for the navel. And <laughs> And this is one that I have um, where I wanted to use a picture that my son painted in school. I want to say seventh grade, maybe. And it was a picture of a, I think, I believe a hawk or a falcon. Who knows? I have to ask him if he remembers. But this is what he did. And um, I am trying to translate that into rug hooking. It's probably going to be a wall piece and I worked on it with, with a rug hooking teacher who drew into my original photo like this. Um, whatever. I don't know if this is interesting to you, but I worked on it in a class and it's a very different technique than the the other one where you just it's kind of like just painting and this is more like really like painting painting and um yeah here's one of my baskets with cut strips and let's see where i am with this because yet again this is one where i do not remember where i am that's how long i haven't touched it And I made this in a size where I thought he could um, use it also as a mat in front of his bed, for example. Not as a doormat by the door. No, no, no. And huh, I think when you do your color planning, you mark things with fabrics like this, but I've already started in it with another fabric. I don't know if this if this was just the line to distinguish from the next from here or what I did here. I totally have to totally have to re-familiarize myself with this project but i it has my heart also yeah shouldn't be too hard to finish it and just so you know and get an idea so i have it in a bin 
in one of the sealed bins and I have cut strips that live in little baskets or stuff like this if you don't know anything about rug hooking this might be interesting to you mm. no i'm gonna get it out and show you this beauty i don't know what i meant to do with this i won this at the three-day workshop with Cheryl Bollenbach in May 2016. Oh, oh, here was a true moment of truth, a true double, double, double true moment of truth. Oh my gosh. Now we know that I worked on this in 2016. So that was the, that's when I participated in the class. And that's what I won at the class. And this is how, like, really, um, this is something that's so fun to use because you, you pull the loops and it changes color. But I have a lot more uh, cooking supplies in, in the garage. And, um, but this is one of the outstandingly gorgeous ones that I own. And then I put this in here. Greens. Got this in here. This. And some strips that are already cut. Yes! And this is it, my friends. Now you have actually seen it all, and I am so glad I've, I've, I have it out in the open all now, and um, I've, I'm ex especially excited about having pulled out the rug hooking stuff, and I am looking forward to pushing some of those projects on a little bit and or maybe even finishing i i want to say that the goal would be to finish the reindeer i have a i don't have a good feeling about how long it will take me to do the rug cooking so ideally i would also finish um the bird for lewis and um but I don't know if this is realistic because I haven't done it in so long. <laughs> okay, I hope you will join us on Instagram and there is the hashtag UFOmania2024 and um, go to Marcus's account and um, check, follow him along because he's already been posting a few pictures of what his stuff is and I still have to do that. I think I only have, I've only done that with the sweater, the Gudrun Johnston pattern. Yeah. All right, my friends, have a lovely rest of your day and enjoy this um, wonderful time of the year. I'm, I myself, I think I'm probably gonna go skiing. That's the plan for tomorrow up drive up to santa fe and um, apparently the conditions are good right now so i'm excited about that even though i'm also a little bit nervous because i haven't done it in so long but i'm i'm sure it's going to be like riding your bike you just jump in your skis and you're like oh yeah that's i got that <laughs> all right you have a lovely rest of your day and have fun evaluating those uh, projects of yours if you are interested in joining joining us. Happy New Year and happy knitting or happy fiber artsing. Bye.